Jailbreaking the PSP could not be any easier today. It could be done on any model and in a matter of minutes. Today I'm going to be jailbreaking this PSP E1000 aka the PSP Street and I'm going to show you guys how to do it along with me. First things first, we're going to need a couple of things. For starters, you are going to need a PC to download a couple of files. You're also going to need a PSP memory stick. What I'm going to be using is this micro SD card to PSP adapter. These things are great. You can put a ton of memory on your PSP and they're really cheap. I'll put a link to one in the description. I'm going to be using this with a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. But if you don't have any of these and all you got is a proprietary memory stick pro duo, that'll work fine as well. We need to make sure that our PSP is running a 6.60 or a 6.61 firmware. If you're running anything lower, you are going to need to update your PSP. I'll put a link to an easy to follow guide on how to update the PSP to 6.60 or 6.61 in the description. Now that we've made sure that our PSP is the correct firmware, we're going to head over to our PC and go to the PS Punk website. Once again, I have a link to this site in the description below as well. Once we're here, we're going to download the ARC4 custom firmware package. It's going to download a zip file named arc4.zip. Place the file somewhere it's easy to access and extract the contents. Once extracted, you're going to see a bunch of files and folders, but the two that we're going to be focusing on is this arc underscore 01234 and the arc underscore loader. We're going to head back over to our PSP and we're going to put in our fresh SD card and format it. Mind you, if you have a SD card that's been in your PSP for quite some time, you've been using it, you've been saving game data on it, you can skip this step. You don't have to format it all over. You only need to format if, like me, you're using a brand new, fresh out of the pack SD card for this process. Now we're going to pop our SD card into the computer or connect your PSP to the computer in USB mode. Once the computer recognizes it, we're going to go into the PSP folder on our SD card. Once inside, you should see six other folders. We're going to take the folder name arc underscore 01234 and we're going to drag it into the save data folder. Then we're going to take the arc underscore loader folder and we're going to drag that into the game folder. Once those two files are transferred over, we're going to head back over to our PSP and make sure that our SD card is inserted. From the home menu, we're going to head over to the game folder and scroll down to access the memory stick. You'll now see a new file there named Arc Loader. Go ahead and tap X. This is going to take a couple of seconds, just let it do its thing. Once complete, the PSP is going to do a soft reset. Once the PSP is back up and running, head over to your settings and go down to System Information. You'll now see your system firmware along with the words Arc-4 Live next to it. Congratulations, you just jailbroke your PSP. Now a few things to note, if you head over to the Extras tab at the home screen, You'll notice a variety of new settings that have showed up. These are all in relation to the custom firmware. And some of these are really cool, like making sure the system is overclocked, making alterations to the way the system reads the memory, changing the boot options. There's a lot of really cool features here. Another thing to note is that in its current state right now, the custom firmware is not permanent. Anytime you reset the PSP, you're going to need to relaunch the ARC4 loader. There is a way to make the custom firmware permanent. And it's on the exact same web page that you downloaded the ARC4 files from. Just head back over to that page and follow the instructions to make the custom firmware permanent. And you'll have a permanent custom firmware in no time. Me personally, I want this thing to be able to go back to its stock settings. So I'm not going to be making it permanent in this video. But you do have the option to do so if you so well please. Now one more quick thing, let's set the SD card up so that we can install a couple of games. Take the SD card and pop it back into your PC. Once the PC recognizes it, at the very root of the SD card, we're just going to right click and create a new folder. And we're going to name that folder ISO in all caps. Now I can't tell you guys how to get games, you're going to have to figure that out on your own, but a quick Google search and you'll find the plethora of information out there. But once you have a game that you're ready to play, you're just going to drag it onto that ISO folder that we created. Pop it back into the PSP, head on over to the Games tab, access the memory stick, and all of your games will be right there. And that's pretty much it. Now you're ready to go out and enjoy all of the fantastic titles and homebrew that the PSP has to offer. It's insanely easy to jailbreak this console. And after 20 plus years, this thing still kicks all kinds of ass. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.